Uh, sir, this is a 17 year old female with occipital headache with severe pain on light touch for one and a half months. Okay, uh, so uh, sir, I am provided uh, with x ray uh, skull uh, frontal projection uh, showing that. Uh, there is evidence of uh, a lucent lesion identified along the uh, left parietal uh, bone. Uh, sir, uh, there is uh, no definite evidence of any fracture lesion seen in the visualized bones. Uh, sir, uh, no evidence of any soft tissue swelling seen. Uh, Sir, uh, this could represent a benign lesion, uh, uh, likely. What is your next one? T1 and T2, I can appreciate an abnormal signal intensity lesion identified in the uh, left parietal uh, region. It is uh, iso. Uh, it is. Uh, ISO2 hypo on T1, hyper intense on T2. And uh, sir, it is uh, showing avid post contrast enhancement. Uh, sir, this seems to uh, arise from the uh, dura and is extending, uh, causing bulge over the soft tissues. Uh, sir, this could represent. Uh, so this could represent eosinophilic granuloma. Uh, yeah, correct. Other differential. Uh, mm -hmm. Other differential, yes. Yeah. So other differential would be uh, meningioma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aggressive meningioma. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Or sir, this could be a metastatic deposit. Yeah, very very nice. Any other differential or should we go with the description now? Uh, should I start dis describing no, sir. it? Uh, no, that's it, sir. So, very nicely described. This, this, so, this is a punch out lytic region on the radiograph, and then we see the weld margins on the CT scan, bone windows, and uh, now on MRI, we see a uh, lesion, soft tissue mass. And I want to tell you that uh, uh, you are correct that it is involving the dura. But the epicenter is in the bone. Like you, you can see the okay, lesion on both sides right. of the bone. Like you can see that in the subgarial space also, the bone, the uh, the soft tissue mass is going there. Also, it is going inside the brain also in the dura, in the extraxial space. So epicenter, right, of the bone, epicenter of the uh, the lesion is in the bone. So it is a primary osseous okay. lesion, as you mentioned, and okay. eosinophilic granuloma in a young patient is a very good differential. Okay, sir. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, Langerhans cell histocytosis is a new name for eosinophilic granuloma, and it can involve any bone by definition. So, whenever you see a lytic lesion in a patient, young patient, you can include eosinophilic granuloma or LCH in the differential without any hesitation. These lesions can be asymptomatic or they can present with pain, swelling, or tenderness. And these are usually uh, punched out lytic lesions, as we see on the radiograph. Sometimes they show uh, bewelled margins or double counter appearance on the CT scan, and they have usually soft tissue component. And differential diagnosis, you correctly identified uh, as metastasis. Other differentials will be a primary osseous tumor, like osseous arc or Ewing sarcoma or lymphoma. Definitely, lymphoma is a big uh, mimicker, and infection such as osteomyelitis. Although in this particular case, infection was very less likely. And treatment is excision and keratage by a surgeon. Eight years old man with chronic headache. Okay, I'm provided with the x ray skull, uh, frontal and lateral projections of an 80 year old man, in which I can appreciate that there is marked bony expansion uh, of the entire. Uh, uh, skull um, with the cortical thickening and uh, there is a mixed lytic and sclerotic regions noted throughout the skull uh, along with the thickening and coarsening of the trabeculae pattern. Um, the base of the skull however is slightly spared. Um, the, no evidence of any discrete lytic 
or sclerotic lesions besides the diffuse uh, sclerosis and uh, lytic appearance giving a cotton wool appearance uh, of the entire skull mm, visualize cervical vertebrae appear unremarkable mandible is normal okay on this given provided ct scan image i can appreciate that there is marked expansion of the diploic spaces with next next lytic sclerotic lesions giving cotton wool appearance um the contour of the outer inner table however is normal no evidence of any bony destruction erosion periosteal reaction um on the basis of these imaging findings my provisional diagnosis of pagets disease i would like to do the serum alkaline phosphatase levels and hydroxyproline levels in the urine and the skeletal survey also i would like to correlate with the clinical details of the patient to rule out any hearing deficits any cranial neuropathies um any pathological fractures uh, however i cannot appreciate any malignant transformation in the given provided images so, very nice yes yeah. spot on very nice so this is a case of pagets disease and a uh, radiographic um, view of the skull and then a ct brain showed uh, mixed sclerotic and lytic pattern of disease and uh, you uh, use the word cotton wool appearance definitely Uh, there is uh, definitely cotton wool appearance and diploic widening is seen by the widening of the calvarial tables these patients can present with hearing loss of the cause of enlargement or narrowing of the uh, interoidal canal and uh, bony labyrinth or narrowing of the foramina of the skull base um, our patient had only headache and differential diagnosis uh, includes fibrous dysplasia or hyperostosis frontalis interna Okay, this is twenty-four year old male with high speed road traffic accident. Okay, I'm provided with CT axial uh, plane, uh, CT temporal bone. This is bone window, right side temporal bone. Here I can see that there is a um, trans, there is a transverse uh, uh, fracture line. that is passing through the uh, temporal um, petrous part of the temporal bone and its proximal part uh, at the level of mastoid air cells and uh, uh however it is not uh, reaching the internal ear structures there is uh, um, no uh, evidence of uh, uh, soft tissue uh, swelling and uh, the rest of the bones appear normal uh, so this is a fracture of uh, this is a transverse fracture of the mastoid uh, uh, process of the petrous part of the temporal bone um, however it is not reaching the internal ear structures so there uh, should not be any concern about the sensory neural hearing loss what about middle ear uh so in this single image i i cannot see the ossicles yeah so they are disrupted and, and there is hemorrhage in the middle ear cavity just i'm just uh, basically for the time sake i'm just uh, moving forward very quickly sorry for that i should have given you time but i think you have described it very nicely there is a transverse fracture through the mastoid process of the temporal bone petrous part is basically more medially Uh, along the uh, internal ear internal ear is spared here so basically uh, temporal bone fractures are common in head trauma blunt head trauma uh, like 20% uh, cases of head trauma have temporal bone fractures and now we know that uh, most fractures are mixed we do not differentiate transfers from longitudinal fractures because most of the fractures are mixed fractures we just have to describe the involvement of the middle ear ossicles or inner ear uh, is involved or not mastoid process is involved or not fascia of canal is involved or not carotid canal jugular foramen so we have to look at each of these things separately and we have to put in the report that these structures are involved or are they spared also we have to talk about the brain that we see in the temporal bone ct if there is any brain contusion or brain hemorrhage we have to talk about the uh, scalp hematoma if it is associated with it Twenty-eight years old woman with SLE and dermato polymyositis treated with immunosuppressive drugs. Now with diffuse painful vesicular rash and right-sided facial nerve paralysis, hearing loss and vestibular ataxia. Hmm. 
So um, these are um, axial, coronal, and sagittal images from MRI brain. Uh, the first one is uh, it's a flare image. So these are all post contrast sequences. Okay. T1, T1 yeah. fat post contrast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So patient has facial nerve paralysis and vasular rash. So can you see something there? On the right side. So let me guide you. So there is enhancement along the canalicular segment of the vestibular cochlear nerve here. My arrow is there. Mm. And also there is some enhancement along the pinna of the right side, pinna of the external ear. But also you can see some enhancement along the genicular ganglion or the facial nerve. Here you can see another enhancement in the right uh, vestibular cochlear nerve. And also you can see this enhancement along the uh, parotid segment of the facial nerve. Here you can also see enhancement along the uh, mastered part of the facial nerve. So this is basically there is a normal enhancement in the right facial nerve with uh, with the vesicular rash. So what is what are you thinking? Ramsey Hansen. Very nice. Good job. So uh, Ramsey Hunt syndrome can be from the reactivation of a varicella zoster virus, which can uh, reside in sensitive nerve ganglion from prior chicken pox infection. Uh, it is a cause of facial nerve paralysis. As we see in this case, patient can present with tinnitus, vertigo, nystagmus, hearing loss, depending upon the nerve involvement. And these uh, cases can be diagnosed with uh, laboratory tests for PCR for uh, VZV virus and enhancement on the facial nerve on the MRI and vestibular cochlear nerve. And differential diagnosis is Bell's palsy and otitis externa and interna. And we can treat with antiviral agents. Six to one year old man with a three to four year history of an expanding mass at the nether bridge, rhinorrhea and reduced sense of smell. Uh, I'm provided with CT coronal and multiple uh, sections of MRI in which I can appreciate significant destruction of bones on the uh, coronal CT image uh, with expansion of the uh, nasal cavity on MRI. I can appreciate um, significantly enhancing mass in the uh, uh, region of nasal cavity and extending uh, Upward uh, into the brain extension into the brain uh, parenchyma as well. Uh, it is extending through the cribriform plate, uh, eroding it. Uh, on T two axial image, I can also appreciate T two uh, uh, multiple cystic a T uh, two hyperintense areas uh, with surrounding edema. Mm -hmm. um, so this is uh, a case of enthesial neuroblastoma. Yes, correct. Very nice uh, spot on diagnosis. So olfactory neuroblastomas arise from the olfactory neuroepithelium. The epicenter of this mass is basically in the olfact, uh, in the cryptiform plate area where the olfactory epithelium resides. These are like two to six percent assigned adult tumors, and they, they are usually in the later age group. They are slow-growing tumors. That's why they cause bone remodeling rather than destruction. And they can uh, they are usually associated with intracranial extension. And when we see cysts along the intercranial extension, that is a very specific diagnosis for this particular disease. And 20% patients develop metastasis. Differential includes uh, sinonasal carcinoma, which is more aggressive and more in uh, older age group. And it is uh, usually hypo-intense on T2 weight images. And uh, other differential will be nasopharyngeal carcinoma, but nasopharyngeal carcinomas are usually located more posteriorly. And juvenile angiofibromas are usually in the adult age group, uh, young age group, and uh, they are more uh, residing in the pterygopalarian fossa. So we can make a diagnosis quite confidently by looking at the MRI images and by these descriptors, as you mentioned, like cystic areas in the brain and crossing the piriform plate with expansion of the bone rather than destruction. And surgical section is the treatment.
Uh, a 43 year, uh, year old man with previous class hemorrhage surgery due to ACTS producing pituitary adenoma presents with right ear pain with ipsilateral uh, lateral cervical tenderness uh, and high fever. Blood analysis re uh, reveals high WBC. Uh, so these are the multiple uh, axial images of post contrast CT scan at the region of the base of skull as well as uh, neck with one of the reconstructed, uh, uh, one of the bone window images. Uh, the lower two images are, uh, the last one is the M uh, MRV image, uh, 3D reconstructed. And um, the second last, uh, the one, uh, the first image in the last row is, uh, uh, this is also reconstructed uh, 3D image through the base of the skull. Uh, so in these images, uh, uh, I can see that uh, there is a uh, um, so there is a pacification of the uh, right-sided uh, mastoid air cells, uh, with the uh, which are almost completely uh, opacified, uh, with uh, opacification of the uh, ipsilateral middle layer cavity as well. Um, uh, the mild expansion of the uh, and the uh, uh, destruction of the intervening septi is also appreciated, uh, involving some of the mastoid air cells on this side. Uh, there is a um, non enhancement of the ipsilateral uh, sigmoid as well as transverse sinuses, uh, with few air loculi uh, noted along the uh, in the intracranial uh, location along the transverse sinus on, uh, on the right side. Uh, there is uh, in the uh, uh, last image of the uh, first row, there is uh, also non enhancement of the uh, right sided, the uh, uh, visualized part, part of the right sided internal regular wave. Uh, these findings are confirmed on the MRV uh, image. Uh, so, uh, on the basis of uh, all of these findings, I'm uh, uh, suspecting is at, uh, as uh, suspecting it as a right-sided mastoiditis with the uh, um, resultant intracranial uh, uh, com complication in the form of a DVST involving the ipsilateral right-sided transverse sigmoid uh, sinuses and internal vibular vein. So very nice, very nice description. So you are spot on that this is a right mastoiditis, collection mastoiditis with septic thrombophlebitis of the right sigmoid sinus and transverse sinus and jugular vein. So this is a case of uh, basically um, Lemire syndrome, septic thrombophlebitis by the mastoiditis. And this is a life-threatening complication of head and neck infection. Uh, it is usually uh, from uh, tonsil infection, but less frequently it can be from mastoiditis also. Mortal mortality is very high if we don't treat it. Early diagnosis and management is a key. And uh, if untreated, this can lead to disseminated disease uh, and it can lead to uh, multiple embolic infarcts uh, yeah. in the, in the um, uh, lungs. And identification of infected focus is uh, the key in the imaging for a radiologist and associated with jugular sinus thrombosis. In the differential, main differential is uh, non-septic jugular thrombosis because we see venous thrombosis all the time in our daily reporting. But when it is associated with infection, that can be life-threatening. And that is where our job is to identify it as sooner, sooner than later. The differential includes the, if the disease is disseminated, it can mimic lung metastasis or lung infection, and it can uh, mimic septic endocarditis when we see septic embolism in the other organs. And treatment is a wide spectrum antibiotic therapy.